Hey, so today is April 7th and we're here with Sheriff Hansel for our media availability. Um, we can just jump right in. Okay. Uh, so, will you talk to us a little bit about how we've been handling calls and investigations? Uh, are we limiting face-to-face -face interactions? Are we doing any plans similar to other local police departments? Yeah, so law enforcement throughout the county has, uh, has taken an approach that uh, we are limiting our contacts with the public. We, we made this uh, determination about three weeks ago when things started ramping up uh, that uh, the Humboldt County Sheriff's Office will do a lot of things over the phone. If it's a non-essential uh, report such as vandalism, uh, property crimes without a known suspect, we're going to refer people to our online uh, reporting software so people can report those crimes online. It's very important that we document those things. You will get a case number, you get everything you would get in in-person contact but yet we would limit that contact. And so, uh, so it's important that number one, people still call us because we're still taking crime reports. If you have a loss or a theft, those kind of things need to be reported. If you have serial numbers, we need to put those into our database and our symptoms, our systems, excuse me. Um, but we want to make sure that those interactions continue to happen throughout this process. Um, we're doing a lot of things over the phone. Each, each officer has a cell phone. They will be calling, making, um, you know, making contact with people. But we're still responding to the serious and violent crimes out there. And we're available. We've, we've increased patrols. We're on 12-hour schedules. And so throughout the county, we have 24-hour coverage. And we're going to continue that way you know, through the duration of this event. Is the county seeing more crime during the shelter in place? And can you specifically speak on uh, business alarms, business break-ins, property crime, squatting? Yeah. Right now, the Humboldt County Sheriff's Office has not seen a huge increase in crime. Actually, we've seen a decrease um, um, in calls for service and, and crimes reported to us. So, so we're happy about that. Even the criminals are sheltering in place right now, it seems. So very, very happy that that's occurring. Uh, we want to continue that way. Um, and so we're not seeing any kind of significant uh, increase in, in, in calls or reported crimes. So we do have a lot of proactive uh, law enforcement officers that are out patrolling during this time, looking at commercial businesses because we know that there's um, places that are closed and there's um, you know some vulnerable you know buildings out there so we have you know increased our patrols we're being as visible as possible and we're responsive so as we don't have a lot of calls for service when there's a call that does happen we're there we're there quickly and we're being very very responsive great um, can you specifically speak on domestic violence and suicide during this COVID uh, have we been seeing more of those sort of cases and what are we doing to support those victims we recognize the fact that right now there's a lot of tension in the air, there's a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety that's going on. And so I think that that's reflective, you know, by each individual is experiencing that and then also translates into family tension and things that occur in the office. And so I think people have to be cognizant of that. There's a lot of resources out there, a lot for people to call in case they need some help. There's helplines, there's, you know, mental health has a helpline. All that, all those information is is available to us, and so you just have to research it, call those numbers to reach out for help at this time. But also, remember, you know, we do have a shelter in place, but it doesn't prevent you from actually walking away on those sidewalks, um, you know, in front of your house, um, and taking time for yourself right now to kind of take a deep breath and um, and to try and uh, you know have some alone time to clear your clear your mind, get some fresh air. Hopefully the weather will be, you know, turning so we'll have some sunshine and people can get out, you know, while they're still social isolating um, and, uh, and social distancing, but at least get some fresh air. And so that in and of itself is, is good for the, the mental health and soul. Absolutely. Um, let's uh, talk a little bit. There's been, you know, a lot of talk about curfews and other places. Do we have any plans for implementing a curfew? So right now there's a shelter in place. It's a public officer's order to shelter in place. When I declared an emergency this last week, it gave me an opportunity, or gives me an opportunity to also instill a curfew. So I have not done that. I have not instilled a curfew. I have not ordered a curfew um, you know, amongst the whole county. Uh, and so as long as people adhere to the sheltering in place, as long as it doesn't cause the need to do that, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, but there may come a time in the future where we may have our hospitals that, that, are, that are overrun, essentially, and people aren't adhering to the shelter-in-place order, and that at that point in time, I may instill a curfew uh, amongst the county residents to make sure that they are actually in their residence, you know, from a specific amount of time, or for a directed amount of time. Sure. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the jail. 
um, how many inmates have has the jail released due to COVID-19 and, and what's the process for booking new inmates? Uh, right now our jail population is reduced by over a hundred and that's from several different factors. Um, one is we want to limit the amount of people that are in the jail, people that were subject to release. Uh, we, were, we allowed them to go out and, and be released. Some were on probation violations. Those people were serving their probation terms outside of the, uh, of the jail facility. Uh, some people were turned out on our sheriff's work alternative program. So there's a lot of different areas where people are going to be released. Right now the Judicial Council actually ruled yesterday that they are going to reduce the bail for a lot of serious and nonviolent offenses to zero. And so we could see uh, more reduction in our jail population because uh, the Judicial Council lowered their bail. So we're working with our courts right now, working with our DA, working with our, our correctional facility to try to determine who else would be released based upon that state ruling. So there's a lot of factors that are going on right now to reduce the jail population. Um, and uh, so some local you know, concerns or some local uh, measures taken and also some state measures have been taken. So in the meantime, we do screen our, our are people that are coming into the correctional facility a whole lot differently now. So instead of coming into the facility, we are actually taking a nurse to our Sally Port area, outside our booking area, reviewing everyone, making sure that they don't have any kind of symptoms or reason or alarm uh, for them that may be infected with, with COVID-19. And uh, so if they do fit our screening criteria about entering the facility at that point in time, then they're processed, they're booked. Um, some people are just in there for temporary reasons like drunk in public, under the influence of drugs. Uh, they're, they're, they're sobering up and they're going right back out. If they're serious or violent, then what we do is we house them in a quarantined area of the facility for 14 days. After their 14 days, then they're, they're put into general population. And then finally, um, I know we can't speak specifically on the number of homeless uh, persons that are confirmed to have COVID-19 because that's not really your area of things, but can you speak of um, what we're doing in general as a response to, to help the homeless? So the county, you know, does take it serious about the homeless population having, um, you know, I mean, they're underserved and it's part of our, our uh, priorities and goals to service the, the homeless population that are 65 and older and that are vulnerable right now. That's our priority to, to make sure that they have opportunity to get to housing, but also the ones that, that are homeless that have tested positive or that uh, need to be in isolation because of their co close association of someone tested positive. They have symptoms um, or they're part of that vulnerable population. We are housing them. So we are, how, there's, there's a hotel here in Eureka that we have actually secured rooms. There's rooms throughout the county that they are securing right now to house those people so they make sure they stay out of you know the general public that they're isolated and that um, and they have all their needs met for that time so they don't go out and infect others okay. and is there anything else that you'd like the public or the media to know today just want to just reassure everyone you know that number one that um, that I appreciate everyone's overall spirit in, in, in cooperating with the shelter in place order. I know this affects so many people. There's so many businesses that are affected. There's so many people that, that you know, have to isolate. There's children that are missing out on a whole lot of interactions in school and, and a lot of fun activities that have to be postponed at this time. But again, this is such a short, narrow time in our, in our lives right now that if we do this right now, then we're gonna have something in May to go to. And so I really, really appreciate everyone's uh, respect for this order and, uh, and we'll get through all this together. Thank you. All right, thank you.